Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on set here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today we're going to unpack a machine. In fact, I've already unpacked it. And as new machines come out on the market, I like to unpack them and test them and, uh, and share with you what I like and what I don't like about them. And today I've got a machine, it's called a PowerPro 205SI. Uh, I can't even find a price on it yet, but uh, from what I understand, it's somewhere above $1,700 range. So it kind of puts you in perspective of, of what the machine is and what it does. So we'll put a value to it a little bit later. It's got several functions on it. Uh, it's got a couple of processes. It's a, a TIG welder primarily, AC-DC. Uh, so we're going to do AC on it first. We're going to break this thing down and, and do about four different uh, uh, developments of the machine. We're going to test AC, then we're going to test DC. It's got a plasma cutter built in, and you can stick weld with it. So we're going to do all four. Now, this particular segment, we've, we've unpackaged it, uh, set it up here. You know, it's, uh, it's in the 50-pound range. So, I mean, it's pretty light by comparison to some of the standard industrial machines. Um, so we've hooked it up. We've got a couple of things on here I want to uh, describe and this is the, the torch that comes with it. And on the very front of the torch, it's got a trigger. That's your 4T. That's if you want to do some uh, portable welding without a foot control. It doesn't happen very often, but when you need it, it's kind of handy to have. Now, the second thing is a foot control. So you can switch this machine to either run this or this. Okay, now, and when I start looking at the quality and the accessories, this machine really is not much different. There's some improvements over the years. Uh, the, the, the torch itself, it's, it's pretty rigid, pretty, uh, I don't know, just it, it's not terribly rugged, but it's, it's cumbersome. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a little later a couple of tricks, and I toss this torch because it just isn't comfortable to use. Now, the foot control, I put this in a category of, of it's usable. It's better than the old style. Uh, but you'll notice it's very narrow and the motion it's okay you know so uh, we're going to show you a couple of foot controls that, that you can replace this with if you want but these will get you by just to get things going uh, another improvement that you'll see is if you look over on the argon bottle uh, the increments are now in cfh and that's a real plus because all of our procedures in the united states especially are written in cfh so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change out my torch and I'm going to change out the foot control and put my gear on and I'm going to do thin aluminum. When I say thin, I'm just going to do 16 gauge aluminum and then I'm going to do quarter inch so I can kind of test the high and low of the machine. So let me get my gear on and we'll get started. Okay, well, it's a pretty stable arc. I've got this thing set on about 70% uh, negative, 30% cleaning. I'm running, uh, I don't know, probably no more than 80 amps. It's a lap weld, 1 16th, you know, 16 gauge, just in a lap condition. Uh, just using the 4043. Uh, it's starting to lose a little control right there. All right, so I back off because I'm losing control. I want to re-solidify, and it's it's a little bit rough here, but it's more of a sound. It is re-solidifying fine. Okay, so I back off and okay. Okay, so I look at this weld and I. You know, I see that I probably need uh, just a little bit more cleaning action. So I'm going to adjust it again. And then I'm really going to test the machine because I want to do an edge weld. Uh, so an edge weld, it, it has a tendency to lose surface tension and drop down. But this is really going to tell you how refined you can get your arc. So uh, let me reset the machine and I'll get back with you in just a few minutes.
Okay, just to recap what I did was I did a lap weld. Uh, the lap weld was 16 gauge material. Uh, it required anywhere from about 50 to 70 amps, depending uh, in the beginning, it always takes a little bit more and then the heat catches up to you. So anyway, I set the machine at about 80, 83 amps and it was adequate amperage. It welded up beautifully, not a problem at all. So then I thought, well, I, I wanna test uh, probably one of the more difficult tests and that's to turn the, a, a plate or a, a sheet metal on edge. And uh, doing an edge weld on aluminum is just a nightmare if you don't have really low amp stability. So uh, I set it on the edge, I tried to weld it. I'm demanding about 10 amps. Uh, so as I go through the specs of the machine, this machine just wouldn't do it. it this machine was designed to light off at 20 amps. Uh, which means also that when you start asking for 10, you're going to get a, a very unstable arc. So increase to 20 amps, it's too much and the material melts away. So uh, I would say anything 16 gauge you're going to do fine with, uh, not edge wells, but butt wells, lap wells, fillet wells, that sort of thing. Uh, so for that portion of it, what I did was I immediately went back down to the plate to see if there were any issues with stability, any issues with contamination and I ran a bead on plate and it came out just beautiful. So anyway, uh, just know that there's some limitations on this and it only drops down to uh, 20 amps. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna test the high end. I'm gonna go quarter inch thick aluminum and see how stable the arc is. So uh, let me change over here real quick and I'll, uh, I'll put in probably 180 amps or so and uh, see how, how it works. I'm using a torch that only has a 150 amp capability, 60% duty cycle. So you can see that it still holds up. You can use it for short runs. 332 diameter tungsten. Again, I'm, I'm pegged out right now. The max that I can get out of it. Anyway, it's, uh, it's struggling a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to taper off, it, it will, it will taper off to about oh, 20 amps, back and off. Okay, so that weld is done. Okay, so I was using this little torch, it's just a 17, a standard 17 torch, it's a 150 amp torch and 150 amp cable. And they're warm, you know, I did six inches of welding here at uh, maxing out this machine. Now what I did, because I only have 200 amps here, usually a, a weld quarter inch thick at about 225, 240, but you can get by by just turning the cleaning action down. Now the offset to that is if you turn the cleaning action down, the material looks dirtier, it doesn't clean up as much. So I had to do that because I only had 200 amps here. So I was running at about 30% positive, 30% uh, cleaning action, 70% negative. Now you can tweak that back, you can go to 60-40, 60% negative, 40% cleaning, and it starts cleaning up, but you lose penetration. So you have to play with the balance. And what I was trying to do is I just want to test this machine and see what it'll do, what it won't do. Uh, so on, on heavy materials, it, uh, yeah, it does the job very nicely, uh, very stable arc, and I expected it to, especially at high amps. Uh, but I did, I, I pegged it out, I ran 200 amps or close to it all the way. So just want you to know there's a couple of features on the machine that uh, I like to stay away from. Uh, you know, you get into pulsing. Pulsing is just, uh, it's kind of an artsy type thing and every once in a while you'll find a real application where you need pulsing. But if you're just getting started in welding, I can tell you that I don't use pulsing uh, probably 2% of the time. So. Uh, turn the pulsing off and then just concentrate on the amperage and concentrate on setting uh, the frequency. I run the frequency, I start at 120 hertz and I pretty much use that for just about everything. So uh, thanks for watching this segment. It's one of four uh, in TIG time and we're doing the uh, this Everlast uh, four-in-one machine. So uh, thanks for watching. I'm Mr. TIG.